It's getting hot in here, so let's make some pizza. Good morning, everybody. Are you in the mood for vodka? I am. Well, I'm not really, but today we are doing a vodka pizza. We're gonna make the dough from scratch. It's gonna be phenomenal. We're then gonna make a vodka tomato sauce. And vodka does things to tomatoes. It gets it going. It loves it. It's like, oh, yeah. It does brings out the flavor. In fact, this tweet here uh, can actually summarize it way better than I can. But vodka, honestly, despite you wanting me to drink loads in a video, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna do that. I might have a sip. It's only 9 a.m. <laughs> but it will create a super delicious pizza sauce for our <laughs> pizza and I get to have it for lunch. Amazing. Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me dough? First thing we're gonna do is make our dough. And in all seriousness, what the heck is wrong with me today? I'm sorry, I'll calm down, but you do need some, if you can get hold of it, you can use standard flour as well, but this is some zero zero uh, flour, sometimes used for pasta. It basically, it's super milled and it's super fine, high, high. So it just gives you a real nice smooth dough if we can make it work dough. Shout out to that guy called John Doe that always comments on videos when I say the word dough. All right, Doe, John. I'm just gonna let my um, warm tap run for a little bit. Don't want it hot, we just want it lukewarm. And on that note, the uh, cinnamon bun video as I film this is going up tonight when I mention about someone called lukewarm passport evidence and I will send you a gadget. So just over 300 mils of that. All right, so into our jug with our lukewarm water. This might look pretty cool. This is two tablespoons of olive oil. One, two. Okay, <laughs> don't know if you can see that, but it's done a kind of like oil spill. Obviously oil spills aren't generally good things, but on top of the surface, there's little bubbles there. Bubbles. We'll also add in a little bit of sugar. And this is one of those packs of uh, yeast. They normally come in about seven or eight gram packs. We can give it a teeny bit of a stir and just leave it for like a minute or two. Now, whilst you wait for your jug, other than weighing out your flour, which I've done just about there, you have the major decision, which many people in life must have, do you do this salt from a pug or do you do classic salt bay style? I want a salt bay. We'll get our flour and I'm gonna sieve it anyway, all right, because I'm a rebel. This flour is so thin though, it is like icing sugar. <laughs> it just feels really lightweight. I mean, look at that. You wouldn't know that that wasn't flour. You'd think it was fairy dust or icing sugar or something else that I'm not gonna mention, child friendly. But of course we can now do the salt bay. And it's just a pinch. <laughs> I love that, I'd love to meet that guy. The great thing about it is whilst we've been mucking around and having banter in the kitchen so far, our yeast has already started working right there. So we'll leave that there. Uh, so you're just gonna give that a little mix. I've never actually understood that. Why sieve it and then salt and then mix it? Are you not clumping it together again? And why am I looking at my fence panel? All right, so I've just made a well. Okay, all right, I made a well. You guys like it when we do that? In fact, me and Jimmy James do that. Into the well is our water. If you want, you can do this on a surface and really knead it. Today, I'm gonna to try, although I'm not succeeding, and keep it fairly clean. Look at this, I've done nothing to it and it's come together like this sort of dough already. That's brilliant, I'm, I am gonna knead it, but I, you can prove it without doing that. Remember, I've done that recently on the Giant Cinnamon Bum video, which is going up tonight, I hope you've seen it, nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and be a good boy and keep my one hand clean, uh, and we'll get a little bit more flour in this bowl just to help. Not too much. Just go like that initially. So I'll just use one hand, <laughs> the one with my ring on. Oh, that just feels so smooth and elasticy already, sieving it and using that extra fine flour. It's, oh, it's proven it's worth. Get it? It's proven. <laughs> I can still feel my hands starting to get a little bit clammy as I'm doing this. So before it gets to that stage, it gets too wet, I'll add a little bit more flour. Just sit a teeny bit of flour down there, a little bit on top. And now, Rapmaster 3000. We're gonna just leave this now to prove for an hour. That's been about five seconds, so I could stop the camera. This is the palm of my hand, don't worry, the screen is about to go white temporarily. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna adjust. Did you adjust? Yes, you did, kinda. Right, so the tomato sauce, Yo, uh, it does take a while, we simmer it down, and the vodka, it kind of, because I think vodka, is it, they say it's flavourless, other than flavoured vodka, go to a place called Vodka Revolution, get a paddle, wow, good night out, if you're of legal age. 
but there's something in the vodka that just pulls out a bit more of the flavor within the tomatoes. And that is why this step now, whilst we're waiting for that dough, it's not like we can sit around and go, uh, we're gonna actually like make the tomato sauce, okay? That's what we're doing. That's, I should have just said that. This is some garlic, and this is actually a little bit top secret. In this box, there's over six different garlic gadgets that I've been reviewing from China. I've been doing, China. <laughs> I've been doing some very secret gadget videos that once you know that I've launched them, you'll see why I've picked certain ones, okay? I'm kind of storing them, and then I'm gonna go, look, there you go. <laughs> I just fired. Is that garlic? Yeah, I always like these garlic peelers, they're pretty cool. That's four cloves of garlic. This is actually a metal one. I tried the plastic one that arrived from China and it snapped in half. True story. So we'll uh, take our pan and push the garlic in like so. Add some olive oil. I'm being very clean today. There's still time to get messy though. Uh, but in with that garlic and the oil is uh, some oregano. So about a teaspoon of that. Right, so let's warm this up. We're gonna basically fry the garlic for about a minute and a half until it's fragrant. This is a tin of ugh, chopped tomatoes. Well, no, it's actually two. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. It's starting to just go lightly brown the garlic. We do not want to burn it. So let's add those tomatoes into the party. The lens might have steamed up then because it gets quite hot. Obviously you could have turned the heat down quicker than I did, but I'm filming and I forget to do things. So uh, just to expect a little bit of splashback. It's just the cold wateriness of the tomato hitting the oil. You could just do it gently. But speaking of being watery, look, you can see how much water is in that chopped tomatoes. Uh, so we really wanna do, get this up to a simmer and then reduce it down a little bit. So let's get it to the simmer stage. You can see some bubbles starting to form already. It won't take long to come up there, but then keep it on a steady simmer about 20 minutes. And Boston and I, are, hello mate. Hello. Hello. All right. Uh, we've just been talking about that sauce and the perks and the benefits of it. Not only is this a pizza sauce, you could put it, mix it with a bolognese kind of vibe or a pasta bake. It's, it's just basically a pasta sauce. Look at that roaring away. That's amazing. And you can see that it has reduced down from where it was to there. So we will now move on. I've put it on the lowest of heats now because I want to kind of show you this. This is some double cream, aka heavy cream that you'd whip. Oh, look at that. And as you can hear, it's not bubbling anymore at all. So we're gonna crank this heat back up. There we go, that didn't take long. So I'm now leaving it to simmer again for around about 15, 20 minutes to reduce down by about the same amount. There's quite a few different methods to cook a pizza. And to be honest, the main thing is just heat. It really wants to be hot so you get a nice crisp dough. Obviously, if you've got a wood-fired pizza oven, it's gonna be insanely good, but there are some other ways around it. Uh, there's actually a video I'd like to refer to now that I'm gonna overlay right now. Uh, it's called a frying pan pizza video on the channel and the website, where you, if you have a frying pan, you get it hot on the bottom and then you grill it. And as long as it's hot, like I say, it works an absolute charm. Loads of you love that video. I actually normally have a pizza stone for my oven but it cracked when we moved house. Now, a way to replicate a, a pizza stone if you don't have one is to get like a baking tray like this, if you don't mind having a rectangular pizza. I mean, who doesn't? Or a circular one, you just have to have it smaller. But you preheat it, the oven, with this in there. This becomes your stone and you sit it on the top side like that. But today I bought one of these like pizza pans, which of course you can build the dough straight in there, shove it in the oven. But we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the oven hot so that this is hot but I've sort of thought of an idea where we can slide it on using baking parchment because a lot of people get scared of transferring the dough, building the most gorgeous pizza and then trying to get it on your stone and it being like, bleh. So whilst this is simmering away looking gorgeous, oh my gosh, I'm gonna turn that heat down a little bit more. And the tripod is trying to fall on me. We're gonna do an outline of this with baking parchment. Whoop. So if I turn it the other way, I now have, I knew have, I now have an outline of how big I can make my pizza. We can lift it off of this, maybe with a board to help it, straight onto our hot tray. I've never done this before, but it should work. We're still waiting for the dough, remember, so I won't get the oven hot just yet, but that's ready to go. Uh, the pan is almost done and simmered down. 50 mils, 50 mils, 100 mils of vodka. I need about 80. I intentionally did this so that I didn't buy a huge bottle 
That was pretty good. So I've got my 80 mils now. And remember, we're gonna add this in and simmer it. So a lot of the alcohol content will evaporate. Probably not all of it. There'll still be a little bit of that in there. So kids, you might not wanna use this, but it's more what the vodka does to the tomatoes with the flavor punch, which you hope if you're making this and you send me a picture on social media, I'll retweet it and all that stuff. Thank you very much. This is the part where if you're doing this with me, you'll be like, oh, this feels weird, but just go for it. Put your vodka in. And you can see how that's simmering instantly. We're gonna simmer this now for another 10 minutes. So it's had pretty much by the end, a total of 50 minutes worth of simmering, which has been perfect timing whilst our dough has been doing its thing and just resting and having a sleep really. This tray is gonna be red hot uh, and I'm gonna do it on that side. So it's still got the lip on it and it's going to go up to a massive 250 C. And that's with a fan, so 270 non-fan, very, very hot. All right, I'm just taking this off the heat and what looks like a gentle, smooth, bubbling mixture. Of course, if you lift your spatula into it, look, you've got all those chunks of tomato. Now this is your call. I actually would quite like it chunky. It would look pretty cool on the pizza, but you can also allow this to cool and blend it until it's smooth for a smoother sauce. So up to you. So we'll let the sauce cool. Chopping board is under there just to give me a bit of stability and we're gonna roll out the dough, which has proved. Ugh, look at that, it's doubled in size. Oh, smooth. So we'll knock it back, get some of that air out. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna take about half of it. Ugh. All right, we'll get some more flour and we'll just start to roll it out. We might have too much, we don't want it too thick, uh, but we're just gonna use that as our template. All right, I think that's blooming worked. I'm gonna give it a little trim around my template and uh, we'll be ready to dress it. And that doesn't mean put cloves on it. And I think what I will do is just pinch it up a little bit for now, just to give myself a little bit of a crust. Yeah, you can see it's just overhanging a little bit because of the size of my board, but it all fall into place, literally. Okay, I have a ladle here and this is the sauce and I've decided to keep it chunky, I'm gonna push it out. Now remember, where you don't cover with the sauce, because obviously that's gonna weigh the dough down a little bit, the crust will naturally form as well. So kind of take it to the edge. I'd love to do a series where I sort of go abroad and learn how like to make really decent pizzas and breads and stuff. I've got some Grana Padano. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Speaking of going abroad, if you haven't seen that video where I went there and learned how that's made, it's awesome. There we go. So that on there, I'm just gonna stagger the mozzarella on. Boom, which is the lyrics to a Venga Boys song. That is now going in the oven. I've got to lift this. So I feel like I've got a little bit of play there by having the parchment on it, onto my very hot pizza tray, which I've never done before, but here we go. When you do this, please be careful, it will be hot. Ooh. So I'm gonna try and keep my tray there and lift it onto that. In fact, oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Okay. And you probably can't hear that, but it is actually sizzling. Just gonna snip that off. Uh, and that bit. That actually worked. And that shouldn't take very long at all. <sighs> all right, I've cleaned up a little bit. I'm gonna have a little. Oh, wow. That is super intense. And speaking of soup, it tastes a little bit like soup. It's intense like the circus, but I love that. And you could probably like add some more seasoning and, and pepper and other spices if you want. Tweak it to your liking before putting it on, but that is gorgeous. Oh, if you're wondering what my favorite pizza is, uh, if you go on the website, there's lots of different ones I've done. Baked bean pizza. Sounds weird. UK nostalgia people might understand that. It's amazing, <laughs> it's so good. Amazing, it's bubbling away. I'm starting to get a few little char marks. I think, I think this is done. Oh my gosh, look how warm my face is right by that oven. And if you excuse my Irish accent, I've got tree trivets there, just in case I don't burn my worktop. Whoa, oh, wow. That is looking insane. I'm so happy with that. Ha, ah, yep, you can see you've got the nice brown base on there. That is what we're after. Let's garnish it with some basil and oil. Oh, how easy was that? Just slid off. 
That's an amazing hack for you to try. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of pepper on there, some olive oil, and then just a few basil leaves on top like that. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, it's got the crunch in the base as well. I'm taking a big piece out of this. Oh, <laughs> cheese pool, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh. There's a slight sweetness in the dough. The sugar was optional, you don't have to add that, but I think it just adds even more depth to it. A nice crisp crust. The flavor of that sauce is so intense and the cheese is working together. Simplicity sometimes, you don't need to load it with loads of toppings. Something like that just works. So of course, if you do have a pizza stone, uh, use some cornmeal, it helps get it on a lot easier or a pizza oven in your garage. I'll be using it soon. Nothing will really quite top that, but that is phenomenal, a great hack. Get that pan hot, get the dough on, send me pictures of your attempts. Good luck and goodbye. That worked quite well, didn't it? That's quite a good ending. Shall I do something random? <laughs> Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 